hello everyone. Uh, for the next minutes, I'll be giving you an update on the state of open infrastructure. We started this right 11 years ago, and the past decade was really about building open source communities who write infrastructure software that runs in production. It was the time of pioneers for open infra. It started with OpenStack back in 2010, but other projects followed in its footsteps using a comparable development model, most notably Kubernetes. The next decade is really about getting open infrastructure, infrastructure powered by open source solutions everywhere. Thanks to the pioneers, using open source to power computing, networking, or storage infrastructure is no longer a foreign concept. We are one year in a decade that will see more projects, more adoption, more innovation in use cases. And we can already see those trends in our most recent user survey. Looking at OpenStack, Mark and Jonathan presented yesterday several OpenStack public clouds and private clouds users growing their footprints well past the 1 million CPU core mark. But growth is not just with users like this who have been around for years. In fact, in the past 18 months, 100 new OpenStack clouds have come online. Those can be small, innovative public clouds like Exion, giving a second life to supercomputers and running HPC as a service or blockchain as a service with specific attention to the environmental impact. Or uh, Infomaniac, a performance-oriented public cloud hosted exclusively in Switzerland. Or OneCode, a public cloud specialized in gaming servers, sitting on a network node in Guam in the middle of the Pacific Ocean to ensure equal latency between Asian and North American players. This is what life looks like beyond the hyperscale clouds. A lot of innovation in very specific use cases made possible thanks to open infrastructure solutions. We also see growth in smaller deployments that aren't 1 million cores. The Net Nectar Research Cloud in Australia has been an early adopter of OpenStack, but over the past year, it grew its deployment size by 140%. In Germany, T-Systems Open Telecom Cloud also grew its deployment by 6,000 servers in two main regions with three availability zones each. And Schwartz IT, which runs infrastructure for 13,000 Lidl and Kaufman stores, almost doubled the number of their compute nodes since the start of the year. So it's really not just the larger or older deployments that are growing in size. We are really seeing explosive growth in OpenStack public and private clouds of all sizes. Our user survey also shows that 80% of OpenStack deployments are in production. A lot of those deployments run a hybrid environment with 53% also running workloads in AWS, 47% also running workloads in another OpenStack powered cloud, and 40% also running workloads on Microsoft Azure. In total, our user survey reports more than 25 million CPU cores of computing infrastructure powered by OpenStack. This is happening in the telco industry, but also in retail, financial services, utilities, manufacturing, all the verticals, and it's growing faster than ever. But it's not just OpenStack. Kata Containers is emerging as the de facto open source standard for running secure containerized workloads. Our user survey shows that information for Kata Containers continues to be in high demand as over half of the respondents are currently evaluating the software. The majority of respondents indicated that they use Kata containers with Kubernetes as their orchestrator. We got reports spanning several industries, including academic research, telecommunications, consumer goods, and manufacturing industrial. Organizations who completed the Kata containers user survey include Baidu, Huawei, Qualogy, Federal University of Technology, MENA, Nigeria, AstroCube, Adobe Advertising Cloud, and IBM Research. Additional organizations have requested to remain anonymous. Adoption continues to increase as well for Airship, our open infrastructure deployment solution. 
particularly within the telco industry. Of the user survey respondents, 70% indicated that they're running both VM workloads on OpenStack and containerized workloads on Kubernetes, a feature respondents shared as to why they adopted the software. Organizations who completed the Airship user survey include ServerAnt, HubbleSan, and SK Telecom. Again, we've got a lot more respondents, but a lot of them have requested to remain anonymous at this stage. Proof of concept environments for Starling X are on the rise, with almost half of the respondents indicating this stage of deployment. But the top three use cases for Starling X, accounting for over 75% of responses, are multi access edge computing at 32%, industrial automation 26%, and universal customer premise equipment 20%. Verizon, T Systems, and Vodafone are running Starling X. And later today, we will hear about Vodafone's use case with Dell and Wind River. Zool, our next generation CI solution, has an incredible 69% of user survey environments running in production, spanning industries including automotive, retail, and public cloud providers. Getting software development at massive scale with speculative merge and cross-project dependencies continues to be features praised by users. But you don't have to have gigantic scale to run Zool. 70% of deployments are running less than a thousand jobs per day. Organizations who completed the Zool user survey include BMW, Volvo, NTT, Wazo Platform, Good Money, Lobancoin, T Systems, 99 Cloud, Cessnet, OpenDev, Red Hat, and Just Heat. So we are seeing a lot of open infrastructure momentum with adoption and development within the project hosted by the Open Infra Foundation. But open infrastructure goes beyond just the projects we host. So cross-project collaboration and cross-project integration are critical. Mark and Jonathan talked about this a little yesterday with Loki. But another example that is just kicking off is with OpenSearch and the Open Infra community. 